Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Google Cloud Next 2018. Brought to you by Google Cloud and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Google Cloud here at Moscone South in San Francisco. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, covering all the top stories here, and day one of three days of coverage, go to siliconangle.com, thecube.net for all the great content. Our next guest is Suzanne Frey, Director of Security, Trust, and Compliance and Privacy at Google Cloud. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming in today. Thank you so much, it's a pleasure to be here Don't today. you love theCUBE, the Google build out here, fits the theme, It is beautiful. mighty fly, <laughs> it, is, it is awesome, it's so exciting. It was great. Great to see Google kind of kind of go to the next level. The energy, the people and the company I've talked to, yeah. we've been following Diane's career, uh, Diane's career since VMware. Yeah. Uh, I knew she was an investor in cloud. The Cube actually started at the Cloudera office when they got their first round of funding. Um, so really a savvy industry executive. Now two years in, the gestation period, you can kind of see it. The best of Google being exposed to the world is really kind of a great strategy. We've kind of yeah. been commenting on that. But one of the things Google has and has had for a long time is they've had a really open culture of openness, open source, but trust. Do no evil is the slogan. And they have all this expertise. Yeah. Is your job to harness that? Take a minute, what is your job? Are you, gonna, are you brokering <laughs> all this greatness? Are you shepherding it? Are you influencing product? What, what's your role? So my role specifically is to ensure that we make Google Cloud the most trusted place for user data. Now, trust is a multifaceted thing. I often say that trust starts with making sure that what you expect, it's what you experience. That's the foundation of it. Um, and so my job is first to start there, make sure that everything that we do is in line with the customer's expectations and it's in line with what they experience once they're in the cloud. And that's everything from making sure that we're compliant, that we handle their data responsibly, in line with all the rules and regulations around the world, which vary greatly. Um, you know, all the way through to making sure that we're building exceptional, simple, smart, and secure products every single day across our stack. So that's my job, and it's to galvanize that, you know, not just in product and not just in customer expectations, but also in the people we hire and the culture we engender. You know, it's interesting. We live in an interesting time right now, and as they say, if you look at the global landscape from politics play to technology, there's a, a transformation is happening where security trust, the data, you got GDPR happening in Europe, you got fake news at Facebook, you got users not trusting, where's my data? So you have this cultural dynamic, kind of independent of the mission of the big companies, mm -hmm. where there's an opportunity to use AI for good. There's an opportunity to have a compliance model that's going to maintain that. How does that affect you guys? I'm sure it does in some way, but this is on the minds of people. Certainly no one wants to be hacked. They want their data to be secure. I want to control my data. I want my data to be leverageable. I want to get utility out of yep. the system. Mm -hmm. Because it's something bigger with Google Cloud. It's now yep. part of a bigger system. How do you guys talk about that internally? What are some of the conversations that you guys have around this cultural shift? It's, it's day one of any new product or feature we develop. Those conversations occur. Um, it's part of our process in developing any new product or feature. We have a team, in fact, a large portion of my organization is entirely dedicated to reviewing and scrutinizing every single feature, every single new product we bring to bear. Even if a customer wants to build a new, or I should say, if, even if an internal developer wants to build a new model, our team is responsible for reviewing that and making sure it's in line with the commitments we have to you know, uh, both legal commitments as well as our customers. So it's part of, and it continues all the way through to the point where I hit the launch button and say this is okay to go. <laughs> nice. So yeah. the way you measure trust is yeah. the expectations match the experience. Now when I look at your scope, yeah. we're like, we run our business on your scope. I mean, Gmail, Inbox, I personally love Inbox. I'm like an Inbox ambassador. Fantastic. And so, and I thank I you for, there thank you for <laughs> developing that product. Google Drive, Docs, Sheets, Calendar, I mean, we run our business uh, on your, your products. And so I wonder sometimes, are we doing it right? Um, some of the challenges we have, I think, are onboarding and offboarding folks. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody leaves the company or come out to the company, you want to give them access to certain sheets or certain documents, and then you sort of forget to take them off. How do you handle that? What's the best practice yeah. there? You develop tooling around that. Sure, Maybe you could sure. talk about that a little bit. 
So we do it in many, many ways. And there are certainly our best practices. They are documented out there through a number of uh, tools and papers that we produce. We also have partners that work with our customers that engender those practices, but also then we bake the technology in so that you don't have to think about these things. And a good example would be we released Team Drives last year. Team Drives is a great example of how you manage documentation for the inbound and outbound employees. It used to be that somebody would actually have to think, oh wait, you know, Joe's no longer on this, we need to move him off and all of that. But with a Team Drive, that's handled automatically. Groups is another way. Google Groups is a great way to manage access to information and the like. And then we have tools like IRM that allow you to sort of manage you know, copying and forwarding information. Um, and there's some more announcements coming tomorrow that'll let you also uh, handle some of these things, but I can't talk about them quite yet, so <laughs> stay tuned. Release it too early. <laughs> Can you talk about how you go to market with those? Because every now and then I'll get a phone call or an email from somebody at, at Google yeah. trying to either introduce me to something, maybe sell something, but yeah. it, it's kind of intermittent. What's the go to market to inform people? We're obviously a small company. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we heard today we want to help small, large startups, big companies, right. governments. How yeah. do you guys go to market? We do it in lots of different ways. We certainly leverage our communication channels online heavily. Um, and we've been ramping up. I mean, our investment in marketing and cloud and getting all of these things, I mean, you can see it right here at Next. This is a huge example of how we're trying to get the word out, you know, writ large across all of our verticals, across all of our customer sets, because I think that is information management, and so that you understand, hey, I have these great tools to bear. That's super important for us to get right, and we're continuing to evolve it. And one of the things I always admire about Google, from day one, the mission has always been speed. Mm -hmm. Load the pages faster, find what you're looking for, yeah. organize the information. Yeah. With security and trust now, um, we were talking before we came on camera, yeah. obviously cloud is an opportunity, AI is an opportunity, as Diane Green, security is the number one worry. Dave's asked this question every year, yeah. um, going back to since 2012, is security a do-over with the cloud? You guys have such great experience with <laughs> SaaS and cloud, is it an opportunity for customers going cloud native mm -hmm. to do security over? Your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll think about this, so I'll answer this in two ways. So for us at Google, it's not a do-over. It's been part of our DNA from day one because we were born in the cloud, right? So from the moment we started to think about how we design a data center to how we design a server to how we retire disks, this was mentioned in the keynote, that's been part of our DNA from day one. So for us, we don't believe it's a do-over. We actually believe we're, we're ahead of Darwin in terms of security, <laughs> well ahead of it. And uh, we'll, put it, we'll put our words behind it that we do believe, bar none, we are the most secure cloud out there. Um, and certainly customers using G Suite, use G Suite, Chromebook, security keys, we mentioned that at the keynote this morning as well. Zero account hijackings, no one else can make that claim, and we're proud to do it. For customers, however, I think many customers are realizing Patch Tuesdays and heterogeneous operating systems and tons of different platforms with customers that are storing information on their hard drives or their thumb drives, and, it's a, it's a nightmare for many customers who have been operating on premise for many years. I think they're waking up to realize, wait a minute, you're going to take care of that, you're going to take care of it, one operating system, all managed from the cloud, one place, my documents are going to sit there, oh my gosh, I can sleep again if I move to the cloud, and that's really part of the, part so you of the make narrative it service. Just a follow up on that, so that was yeah. Chromebook, G Suite, and two-factor authentication, yes. I think you called the Titan security. Yes, Titan that right? security keys, And, and the two-factor authentication comes from what, is it a dongle? Or? It's, it's, a, it's actually hardware based, so if you think about, so people, two-factor's not a new term, two-factor's sure. been around for a long time, right. a lot of people would have these uh, tokens that would generate a numeric right. key, Boom. and you'd look at that and you plug it in, well that's fishable actually, that key gets transmitted um, when you actually authenticate authenticate, and that can be picked up. Exposed, yeah. Exposed. With hardware, it's all based on the hardware. There's no key um, that's exchanged. It's all authenticated to your device, and that makes it unfishable. You don't think about or, it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, good. so let's talk about compliance for a second. That's part of your job. Obviously, we see this year was kind of a, the, uh, the, the earthquake, the, the tectonic plates of GDPR. Yes. Um, and certainly <laughs> yes. Google's experience a little fine in the EU or some other areas of your business. Obviously data is a regional thing. I've seen in Germany, we know what's going on there. Yeah. So as a customer goes global, yeah. um, you could be in the US, you, there's now policies that need to be kind of implemented. Is that where software's going to help? How are you guys talking to your customers and what's the solution that you guys see for compliance and making it seamless? Because mm -hmm. it's a real hassle. Mm -hmm. You got to start yeah. thinking, some, some sites and some companies aren't yeah. deploying their solution. Their website has been stripped down yeah. because they couldn't comply with the yes. GDPR regulation which gives the users the ability to essentially tell you to forget me and all kinds of other things. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to get into it, but the point is that 
this puts the pressure on companies. Yep. Like literally overnight where it was a policy and people in the database world know that data sprawl is a huge problem. People don't even know where the data is. Do, you know, what database is that on? This is a huge kind of issue. How do, you, how do you guys talk about that? Well first I'll say that compliance is always a shared responsibility between ourselves and our customers. However, those customers who have worked with us and have been you know, going cloud native with us have found that the journey to be much, much um, less frictionful, I will say, or I'd say it's more frictionless because we are the team that's really had to implement the technical controls around GDPR. And I want to emphasize, GDPR is incredibly important legislation. We believe it's very important. Two years ago we launched an initiative to be sure we were compliant on time. We're proud to say that we were among the first to announce that compliance um, in the cloud. And we're really happy, you know, our customers have been happy. Um, and you know our relationships, we, we you know, take on a large responsibility for maintaining the relationships with the legislators and the regulators around the world. Many companies can't scale to do that. And by going with Google, you know you've got a tight and good relationship, a company that is focused on maintaining good relationships worldwide on that front, and that's so, been important. So two years before GDPR went into effect, that's much better, most companies were <laughs> were two months before the fines went into effect. Yes, no, well, it was, it was roughly about two years. I think it wasn't quite exactly two years That's between a, the time it was announced, but it was close to that. But it's, but it's, but it's not just a technology problem, too. This is what makes it so hard. It's a lot of people and a lot of process. And Absolutely, yes. shared responsibility, yes. as you said just now. Yes, and the fact that the data's all in one place of the cloud, again, makes a huge, huge difference with your posture and your compliance posture in the, right. for GDPR. Suzanne, you've been at Google for over a decade. What's motivating you, what's exciting you these days? Obviously, the cloud market's pretty hot, so that's kind of a, a nice area, to, nice wave to be on. Yep. Yep. Um, what's the culture like at Google now? What's the DNA, what's the, what's the internal? Because Google Cloud's got a spring to their step. We can obviously feel it, we can see the results. Um, but it's just the beginning of, the, of this new wave. Yep. What's yep. exciting you and what's the DNA sure, of Google culture? Sure. Google Cloud culture. Well, Sundar echoed, echoed this this morning, and um, you know, I'm, I was so happy to hear it. I'm at Google because of the mission. I'm here um, to manage the world's information, make it universally accessible and useful, and secure. <laughs> I will add the and secure <laughs> to my mission. Um, I came because that was so exciting to me. I, you know, as a kid, I never got encyclopedias because my father was like, "They're going to be out of date," <laughs> you know, instantly. Data quality number one. He was smart. Data <laughs> yes, scientist. Yes, he was. He was. Um, and when you know Google started to evolve, I was so excited. I'm like, "Oh my gosh, this! Look at what's happening to information management in the world." And that's why I'm here. And I'm surrounded by other fellow citizens who are so excited about that, but also excited about the challenge of keeping information secure. Um, so that's what excites me, and you know, to work around so many great data scientists and software engineers and uh, you know, site reliability engineers and customer. I mean, like Google is about engineering at its core, but we take such an it takes such a human approach to working with our customers, understanding how important their information, their productivity in the cloud is, their security in the cloud is, and, and I'm, that's what excites me every single day. Final question for you, talk about what you're working on, what's your guiding principles uh, for your organization, mm -hmm. where are you guys hiring? Obviously, you mentioned earlier, which I love, the expectation is the experience should match. That's yes. a great, great quote, I think that's important. Yeah. But I would argue that to add to that complexity is that expectations that are coming are not yet known. You're seeing sure. things like blockchain, for instance, mm -hmm. kind of hit mm -hmm. a lot of exciting areas yeah. around security, decentralization, decentralized applications, token economics. So you're seeing a world starting to get a little bit different where those expectations are not yet seen. So you got to kind of get, get out front on that. How are you guys managing that? How are you Absolutely. hiring? What's the vision? Sure, sure, sure. So, you know, there's sort of three pillars that Prabhaka Raghavan talked about this morning, simple, smart, and secure. Those are kind of our guiding principles for everything we do in, for example, G Suite. Um, you know, how we're thinking about the future, well, we're very, very lucky that we're always getting low latency signals about what's happening in the world right now. I mean, we talk about spam and phishing protection and things like that, and we get billions of signals every single day about malicious information or you know, um, you know, malware, ransomware, those sorts of things. So we have a very low latency view into what's happening at the next minute, right, around the world in that, in that respect. And that gives us a competitive edge in terms of really thinking about what's the next thing that's going to happen. We certainly know that machine learning, whether it's smart compose and smart reply, or it's actually based on security and anomaly detection. What's an anomaly to one company 
is not necessarily an anomaly to another. Yep. It depends on what business you're in and the like. So investing in machine learning and understanding right how to be how to be that security guardian for our customers in an automated fashion, so that people don't have to worry about security, right? Yeah. We've taken care of it for them. That's that's you know yeah. the holy grail, and that's what we're investing in right now. Susan, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate. It. We were just talking before we came on, Dave and I, before we went live, that if security and some of these complexities can be just services under the wire, like electricity, all QA'd before we even turn the lights on yeah. of computing. That's kind of the goal. So we're super yes. early. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Dan Frey, Director of Security, Trust, Compliance, and Privacy at Google Clouds, theCUBE. Yeah. Live coverage. Stay with us. This is day one of. Three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. <laughs> I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be right back. Hey, okay. thank you.